casting a lightning spell to make plants grow faster? It sounds like fantasy, but magic is often just science that we haven't yet explained. And this science of electrifying soil could indeed supercharge how fast our food grows. So hold on to your gardening hats as we figure out how this charm works. Hey, 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 I'm Neba, and these are my notes on a shocking discovery that just might make your grocery bill shrink. For more stories about flowers and botany, you can check out my socials, and for now, you can like, comment, and subscribe to get more planty stories and to support me in sharing more about our green friends. Let's get into it. Chapter 1. What's going on? So there's currently about 8 billion people here on Earth, and that's expected to increase to like 9.6 billion by 2050. So we need to increase our food production by 60% to feed everyone. And so rather than just bulldozing more land for farming, let's figure out how to grow more food on the land we're already using. This cat keeps trying to eat my mic. <laughs> and it turns out that electricity might hold the key. So one way to do this is to look at how and where we are growing the food. So you might have heard of a little watery thing called hydroponics, which are all the rage right now. Hydroponics is growing plants without soil. Usually it's like in a controlled environment used for veggies, leafy greens, way more. And this method is more water efficient than soil farming because the water gets reused. And it also uses less fertilizer because the nutrients also get recirculated. They're really great for urban areas since they save land and you don't have to spend money like transporting the food, but they do cost a lot in terms of energy and materials. So what if we made a better material? People usually use rock wool as the common thing to support plants in hydroponics, but that's not very eco-friendly because it's a, so it's a man-made like mineral fiber. You melt down basaltic rock and then you spin that melt into fibers and you add a binder and then you smush it and you crush it and you cure it into these like large slabs. So instead we could use biopolymers, which are more sustainable and that's where the electricity and the e-soil comes in. But before we get into e-soil, which is like this brand spanking new material that was just developed a few months ago, let's take a quick zap back in time to see how we got here. Because the idea of using electricity to boost plant growth isn't brand new, even though it sounds absolutely wild. Scientists have actually been playing with this idea for years, exploring like various methods and what the effects are, and they've found that certain electric fields can actually stimulate crop growth. It's like giving plants like a gentle electric massage, encouraging them to grow faster and stronger, but not just just like zapping plants randomly, there's a science to it. It's specific types of electrical stimulation that can make a real difference, like finding the perfect workout routine, but for plants. Some big experiments electrifying plants date back to 300 years ago. So in 1746, Dr. Mainbray of Edinburgh used an electrostatic generator on myrtle plants to enhance their development and their blooming. And then two years later in 1748, Jean Hallet also observed increased germination and development in the plants that were under these like electric electrically charged terminals. And then enter Professor Carl Selim Lindström. He's a key figure in like the late 19th, early 20th century. His pioneering work in 1904 revealed how atmospheric electricity could boost plant yields and sweetness and aroma. And yeah, I said atmospheric. It's pretty wild. But anyways, his studies were actually among the first to systematically explore and document the stimulating effects of like these natural electrostatic fields on plants. So this like laid the groundwork for modern research into electroculture and its applications in agriculture. So currently there's a bunch of cool things happening in the field. Like scientists have found that high voltage fields could make old rice seeds more vigorous and improve their membrane system. And one of my favorites is this like wind and rain energy driven system. They made this like all weather triboelectric nano generator. <laughs> it sounds really fancy, but it just harvests wind and rain energy from the environment. And then they use that to drive various like agricultural sensors for plant growth. And this is just so cool because like, it's a self-powered system that's a safe, like efficient and eco-friendly way to improve agricultural production. And this could hugely contribute to like making a sustainable economy. And so now with eSoil, the scientists at Linsherping University are taking this concept to a whole new level. They're not just electrifying the soil, they're rethinking what soil can be. And the results are indeed shockingly good. Chapter two. E-soil, because dang, that's a catchy name. Okay, now for the most exciting freaking part you've been waiting for, e-soil, because it's not your typical dirt. So the scientists used like a blend of one cellulose and two, an electronic conductor, also known as an omic. So it's both a scaffold for the roots to grow into, and it's also a stimulating electrode, which is important for the roots to like grow in and integrate and all that good stuff. 
So that first thing, cellulose, it's a natural compound that's found in plant walls. It forms the biodegradable backbone of e-soil, so it provides the structural support, kind of like it does in plant cell walls. So this helps maintain the physical integrity of the e-soil, so it can be shaped and used like traditional soil. And since it's biodegradable, that also means that e-soil is environmentally friendly and sustainable. And then the second thing is that e-soil also features an electric conductor called PDOT, and that's an omic that's stable in watery environments, and it's really good at conducting electricity. And this is what energizes the e-soil and sets it apart from just regular soil. So PDOT is known for its stability, transparency, high electrical conductivity. It's often used for things like anti-static coatings and capacitors, and even in some medical devices. But here, the point of PDOT in the e-soil is to conduct electricity because it's this electrical conductivity that sets the e-soil apart from regular soil. So when you apply like a mild electric current to the e-soil, this conductive network distributes it evenly throughout the entire medium. And so the highlights in all of this about e-soil is that it's environmentally friendly, it's an awesome addition to hydroponic farming, and no, it's not going to be an enormously high electric bill because the electrical stimulation is based on like low voltage with low power consumption. And so it's the combination of these two components in e-soil that makes this unique growing medium. And so this approach to plant cultivation could revolutionize how we grow plants, especially in controlled environments like greenhouses, hydroponics, or potentially in future extraterrestrial colonies. But more on that later. Chapter three, does it work? So when I heard about all of this, I was like, okay, wow, this sounds really cool, but clearly it doesn't have a point if it doesn't work. So to test the e-soil, the scientists used barley seeds, which is a really common hydroponic crop. They set up the e-soil alongside what we currently use for hydroponics, the rock wool. And then they filled the containers with nutrient solution, put them in a growth chamber to precisely control environmental conditions, and then added the seeds. So then 15 days after germination, the plants were harvested and measured, and they found that there wasn't much difference in the plant growth. Well, wait a minute, yeah, that is what we would expect if there's no electricity. But hey, this does show that e-soil by itself won't complete the spell. We need to add that electrical stimulation to the root system. So again, they put the plants on these two scaffolds, the e-soil and the rock wool, and this time they gave them electrical zaps for five days, and then they let them grow for another five days. And holy freaking shit, the plants that had a little electrical nudge in e-soil, they showed a whopping 50% more growth surpassing those in rock wool. And in some cases, these plants even made more leaves. And what's interesting is that this faster growth wasn't when the zapping ended on day 10, but rather when the barley could grow for another five days. So we could get this amazing effect just with like an electrical treatment instead of like constantly electrically zapping them. Chapter four, how the heck? So how does it do this? So it turns out that the plants in e-soil, when they're zapped with a bit of electricity, they get better at transforming nitrate into the kind of nitrogen they can use, making them super efficient at growing. And nitrogen is really essential for plants since they need it to make proteins, nucleic acids, and other important things to, you know, live. But the big question is how, and that's what scientists are trying to figure out next, because this could mean really big things for reducing fertilizer use and boosting plant health. Chapter five. So this all sounds really great. Can we start doing this already? Well, yeah, the world of e-soil is super cool, but there's still more to explore. Yes, the scientists behind e-soil are onto something big. They've shown that electrical stimulation can do wonders for plant growth, but their focus has been on seedlings, not like entire plants. So we need to figure out like, could this growth boost like last for a plant's entire life cycle? How much zapping would a plant really need? And the nice thing is that e-soil isn't just a wonder soil. It can be used to test how the plants respond to the electric fields, which is great because we still need to figure out like exactly how and why this works at a molecular level. It's a bit like having a magic power and then not really knowing where it comes from. So we're going to need to figure out the molecular workings behind how the e-soil helps plants be more like nitrogen efficient and what the effects on other nutrients might be like arginine and glutamine. But again, this is like super relevant for our growing world between like climate change and urbanization. We need smarter, more efficient ways to grow food. And so e-soil could be a game changer, especially if like, I don't know, vertical farming in cities. Imagine like tall buildings, not just housing people, but also feeding them with fresh produce. 
And this research isn't just about like growing more food, it's about opening new doors in sustainable ag. Could lead to like smarter farming methods that need less water and fewer resources. But you know, like all great adventures, it's important to tread carefully, but fully understanding like the terms of this, the effects of this, the cost of this. And actually in terms of cost, eSoil is a really low power device. And speaking of cost, actually, eSoil is a pretty low power device. So it could potentially just run on like solar power. And while we're crunching like numbers on cost, we do know that eSoil, like the materials are generally pretty affordable, but rolling this out on like a large scale in farming could require a lot of like upfront investment. But the more interest there is in being sustainable, the more likely we will invest in it. So there you have it, eSoil, the soil of the future. Do you wanna know more about such planty inventions or do you have ideas for what stories I should dive into next? Leave a comment and join me next time for another green tech adventure. I'll see you on the next page. Homeostasis. 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 Wow, turns out putting a blanket on the floor makes it so much more comfortable. <laughs> Love that. Ugh.